today I'll be talking about design system as a service, not a product, and how design systems can actually reach out to other teams and other skill sets within an organization to make, your um, to make your design system diverse and inclusive. So, as previously stated, I'm a UX designer, previously working at um, US designer working at University Arts London, where we try and connect um, students, academics, and staff members together by using uh, user-centered design methodologies. Before that, I used to work at the BBC as a UX designer. And before that, I worked in South Korea, teaching English as a second language. So there's three re reasons why I'm so excited about this talk. The first one is that I can actually talk to everyone here to kind of show that design systems can go beyond just designers and developers, but to other teams, other skill sets. The secondly, um, the collaboration, being able to collaborate with different type of teams and skill sets. And thirdly, something that I'm really um, uh, touched by is education and knowledge sharing. It's important to share your knowledge and to engage with other people uh, so they can actually know what you're doing and how you can actually encourage them to take on some of the skills that you know and you, so they can use it on their everyday life. So I first off want to ask a question for everyone. Um, how does your organization and how do you perceive a design system? It'd be great for you to leave this answer within the chat so we can talk about it afterwards. So, Talking about a design system and how it's perceived within the industry, uh, here's a good quote from Nissan Norman Group. Um, they summarize the design system as known as a pattern libraries or, pat or component libraries, prom um, promoting quality, consistency, UX design across products. So looking into the design system, we can see how it may be structured within some organizations. We have a pattern library, which has brand, atoms, components, and templates. We have tools such as Figma and GitHub, guidance, principles, guidance, documentation, and research, like reports. Typically, a design system is positioned with designers and developers who are the producers and the champions of the system. This can make these two teams feel overstretched uh, by having to promote and become the champions throughout the whole organization to promote the design system. Also, due to only being within the scope of the designers and developers, there's minimal awareness of the design system throughout the whole organization. This makes it difficult to promote the design system throughout the organization leading to a lack of awareness and acknowledgement of the design system. And this makes it difficult for growth and adoption of the design system. So let me give you a bit of a background of University Arts London. The university is made up of six colleges throughout London. We have two factions, which is one is private and one's um, private. And there's 26 departments. I'm based within the digital team, which is part of the communications and external affairs department. Our team is very small, made up of designers, developers, content designers, and accessibility. So we have ownership of five products, but we're also hired by other, other um, departments and teams throughout the university to provide our expertise in UX and development, content and accessibility. This makes it difficult in terms of us being overstretched. But due to this, we want to grow other people's confidence in how they can actually utilize the skills that we have and apply it to what they do every day. So with a small team, we have a challenge of scaling the amount of teams using the design system throughout the organization. By scaling acknowledgement and usage of the design system, the small team can focus on teaching others how to use it and encourage collaboration throughout the whole organization. 
another thing as well about this, the perception of a design system is that it's just a pattern library. But we want to go beyond that. We want to go beyond the pattern library, bring in different type of components such as accessibility, data, project management, and more. Traditionally, a university works in a waterfall format, but the digital team works in a way that is agile. We adapt to different changes, just like how digital works. And through the way that we're going to be teaching the design system, we want other teams throughout the organization to feel the, the benefits of being agile. And another thing that we want to do is distribution between other teams and skill sets so they can use the design system. And this is being done by onboarding these different teams and skill sets, knowing how to use the design system in an efficient way, allowing them to feel that they have knowledge and the ability to contribute to the design system, whereby helping the design system to become inclusive and diverse. So how might we make a design system inclusive to allow anyone to use and contribute to the system? It's all about expanding the team, empowering non-designers and developers to utilize the design system with large range of resources to produce better products and services to serve the key users that they want to connect with. And to actually allow little to no post-involvement of the design team due to the, no the acknowledgement and know-how of using the design system. So here's a really good quote from the uh, CEO of Figma, Dylan Field. Designers are opening up. They're welcoming non-designers into the process. They're co-editing with teammates. They're sharing what they do and how they do it with the community. What I find really interesting about this quote is that designers are opening up. We're accepting more people outside our design circles. It's a good idea to start a movement of being that team of people to kind of get people to come into that circle so that we can all work together to serve better human-centered design products and services. So the state of the design system could be seen as being very small within a organization in terms of the, the amount of awareness of the design system. But by adding new skills and new talents to the design system, we're able to expand the acknowledgement of the design system throughout the whole organization. So, Currently, right now, it's built in isolation with only the design and development teams, whereas the business analysts, project managers, policymakers, accessibility, marketing, content teams are not able to really use the design system. So with the design system managed as a product and owned by the design and development team, it's been isolated from the whole organization. But with the new model, centralizing the design system so that design teams can start at the providers and then span to other teams and skill sets, we can all together with different type of teams, stakeholders, and skill sets be able to utilize the design system as a service. So looking at what we have as the design system, the components, we're able to expand on them adding extra modules to each of these different type of components, where pattern library is able to use code and illustration tools, that like storybook plugins, Hotjar, research, user personas, research repo, and templates. And going beyond that, because we're connecting with different type of skill sets and teams, we're able to add extra components to the design system so that everyone gets involved. So accessibility, data and management can have their own components within the design system. So the interesting thing about this new model is how did we arrive to this model? 
Here's a really good quote from Lou Down. The things that connect other things, the spaces between things. So the thing is the design system. The other thing is other teams, stakeholders, and skill sets. Therefore, the thing in between that connects the two, that's what's important. So creating a design system as a service, not just a product, is what we're trying to aim to achieve. It allows us to connect many different teams and skill sets and provide for their own needs. So, looking at the main teams who are actually championing the design system. But now, with this new model, we can actually bring in different type of teams and skill sets who can also champion the design system. But the thing is, how do we connect the design system with these new teams and skill sets? That's where we create a service in a form of a UX advocacy program. It's reshaping the design system to connect with new teams and skill sets. This program never existed before. It's something new. It's experimental. Though the experience through creating this advocacy program, the digital team found that stakeholders want to become more confident about using the design system. So the digital team created this program to empower other people to utilize the design system, but also feel that they can contribute to it too. So let me give you a bit of a background about this UX advocacy program and how it's structured. So it's an educational service with three sections. So we have the introduction and foundation to UX, visual design and prototyping, user research and analysis. So using the design system components as teaching tools, we can utilize the design system to be taught as, as tools within each of these lessons. And the great thing about this, we're already using this new program throughout the organization. So we have business analysts, project managers, content designers, accessibility, marketing, and policy makers already taking part within these lessons. And the great thing about this is a selective model. You can pick and choose. So with the first section, we want participants to be introduced to the concept of UX, to gain an understanding of how UX impacts our daily lives. So this section is broken down into three lessons. We have the introduction, crash course, user personas, accessibility with UX. And as you can see, the design system components are used as the tools for teaching the lessons. This helps the, the participants to learn about the design system in a more accessible way. So they can actually take what they have learned and apply that design system within the work that they do at the university. The second section, visual design and prototyping. We want participants to understand the basics of user journey mapping, information architecture, and prototyping skills. For the user journey mapping, we use research as a tool for teaching this lesson. Likewise, with the information architecture, we use research. But for the prototyping crash course, we're using pattern libraries and the tools. And lastly, for our third section, the participants will learn the basics about qualitative and quantitative method methods for gaining insights from users. And th again, this section is broken up into three lessons, guerrilla testing, lab testing, and UX analysis. For the guerrilla testing, we're using the pan library and tools. For lab testing, we're using tools and research. And for the UX analysis, we're using tools and research as well. So we're looking at that old model of where the design system was positioned, only with the design and development team champion, championing the design system and the sole providers of the design system. With the introduction of the UX advocacy program, we're able to change that so that it becomes centralized. It becomes part of everyone's 
um, uh, ownership and able to, for them to champion that design system too. And also to contribute to the design system, bringing in different skill sets and different teams to the mix of making the design system stronger. And this is a great quote from one of the participants, Lisa Van Erk. She's an operations administrator at UAL. From do, participating in the advocacy program, she's able to gain experiences of, in, of connecting with users by doing user testing and analysis. She understands that being involved is very important to understand the wider scale of what kind of impact she has on the university when she does her work. And it allows her to understand that what she does is making a big impact for the place that she works for. And the great thing about this, it's not just University Arts London just doing this. Many other organizations around the world are doing it. And you can see this happening through the Figma community. So here's a few examples of these organizations around the world creating different types of design systems which go beyond design and development. So we have Mixpanel, who creates, created a chat kit an annotation kit, mood board, and feedback kits for their teams. We've got Figma for education, making mascot maker, uh, making mind map pro, uh, files and uh, research resources. We've got Microsoft creating plugins, which brings in real live content data, uh, content data into the designs, which were produced by content designers. We've got Universal Arts London, we created our new user personas, which are modular, bringing in accessibility components to create a more diverse range of user types. And lastly, this is outside of the Figma community, but something that I would love to touch upon, which is GDS, Government Digital Services. They have their own space where they call their own design system a service manual. So a service manual which aims to achieve a joint team network and collaboration by a scale connecting central and local governments together, and in-depth explanations on, for non-designers and developers to understand how to utilize different parts of the, um, of the manual so they can actually utilize it and contribute to it too. I also want to give a, a, another quote from Lou Down. She states that unless we help people to bring things bring these services together across departments. We're just making the same thing slightly faster and slightly better. She's highlighting the value of connecting departments together to make a service happen, emphasizing the importance of helping others to come together instead of working in silos. So I'd love to actually leave you lot with these three takeaways. So, to bring the design system alive, everyone should get involved. It should be collaborative. It should be inclusive and diverse. As Dylan stated, welcoming non-designers into the process will help to collaborate with other people outside of your circle and connect the whole organization together. As a university, we have the privilege of being in a space where knowledge sharing culture exists. But I believe that this type of culture can exist within non-educational related organizations too. And another thing as well is that we, sh we appreciate that this program is possible to be run by multidisciplinaries. It's still a work in progress, something that we are working on to continue to, to improve. We are bringing in different teams and skill sets into the mix so that the program that is used to connect new different type of teams and skill sets together is becoming more stronger, diverse and inclusive. Therefore, making the design system a very strong service which can be used throughout the whole organization. So I hope that you enjoyed this talk, looking at how a design system is able to become a much bigger thing than that we imagine it to be. A service that can connect many people together 
to educate and to fill the next generation with a lot of hope and joy that they're able to reach out to their key users in a unique way. So I'll be happy to actually read your comments on what a design system is and how you would like and how your organization would like to develop a design system so that it becomes much more stronger and much more personalized for their own organization. So thank you for everyone for attending my talk.